Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to talk about character tables, which are, well, well debatable, but uh, kind of the gist of the battle, the most important notion in at least classical representation theory of finite groups. So a very, very ridiculously efficient way to encode representations and those um, properties of the groups. Um, so let's have a look, actually. It's really, really cool and very important. And as we will see in the next video, um, what you really need to do in the end is then to kind of make some big data and list a lot of those character tables for uh, finite groups. But first of all, let me just mention here kind of a fun historical fact that character tables actually were around before representations were around, which is not quite obvious. But uh, what Frobenius started um, representation theory about, well, quite a while ago, let's say 120 years plus. Um, so the notion of a representation was not quite known. So Frobenius did something slightly different, more like factoring determinants of uh, matrices and kind of the irreducible characters or the simple characters um, turned out to be kind of the well, building blocks, the irreducible factors of those determinants. And what Fabinius then did is Fabinius wrote down those functions, those uh, well, characters of those representations without actually knowing what a representation is. So without really ever defining what a representation is, that, that notion came a little bit later. But the point here is um, character tables really were around from the very beginning. So from the very beginning, uh, people looked at character tables. So that must be something important. Um, and I say it again, it's kind of easier at least, well, in hindsight, it's certainly easier to write down a function that spits out numbers uh, associated to a group instead of writing down really a representation. And that's basically what a character is. Remember that a character just gives a number for each conjugacy class, which is a trace of one of the elements on that conjugacy class. And that's what Provenius did. Um, and here's Provenius' character table of the tet Tetraeda, the tetra tetrahedron, uh, which is, well, the group of order 12, and it's actually A4. So it's a symmetry group of the tetrahedron. If you ignore um, the, the reflections, um, then the symmetry group of this te tetraeda is uh, the alternating group A4. So it's a character table of this group of order 12. And what Fabinius does here already, and we'll see that all the time, is this funny uh, letter that Frobenius calls rho, and rho is really just a, a third root of energy. So uh, it's not quite readable because this, this picture was taken um, from a slightly bad um, angle in some sense. Well, so there's the book here, the old book by Frobenius, kind of linked in the description, but it's I don't have actually a PDF. So this is actually a, a picture. And what Frobenius writes here is, well, a pr primitive kubische Wurzel der Einheit, so a primitive third root of unity. Um, so that's row. And you see it down here. And it actually really doesn't matter which one you take. So there are two primitive roots of unities, if you think third root of unities. If you think of the triangle lying in C, password R2, um, and this one would be, well, this one would be, I read it down in coordinates in a second or later. And it doesn't really matter. So you get two representations, and they are determined by well, the row or row squared uh, for one of the conjugacy classes. Anyway, so um, so what Robinius already did here, uh, Robinius already classified the simple representations of uh, this tetrahedron group, and there are four of them. So let's have a look. So here are four uh, denoted by chi, chi zero up to chi three, and there are four conjugacy classes um, denoted by uh, chi upper zero up to chi upper three, and the various values are here, and we'll zoom in and see some properties of this uh, table in a second, because there is quite a bit of information just encoded in this table, and that's what I really call, or would like to think of as being a really, really efficient way of encoding um, information. Already keep in mind that a character is kind of a trace of a matrix associated to a representation. So you only remember one number in per conjugacy class instead of a whole, whole representation. So that's already very efficient. And uh, while we will see more kind of numerical miracles in those character tables. And so this maybe might be the first ever published character table. Okay, um, 
it's a little bit easier to read, but I changed notation slightly. I was a bit confused why Fabrinius liked to start with counting with zero. So I just like to start counting with one. I don't know, doesn't really matter. And this is how it works. So as I said, uh, the simple representations are in um, the columns. And I said that wrong here. So the simple representations are here and the conjugacy clauses are here at least in this table. So these are the simples um, and I call them chi's and these are the, uh, well, the conjugacy classes called C. So there are four conjugacy classes. It's a property that you can just compute on, on for the alternate group, not too hard. And usually you also want to keep track of the size of the conjugacy classes. So the conjugacy class of the identity element, the so unit element is just of order one. Uh, conjugacy classes of something a billion is all, are always of order one because, well, if you conjugate, let's say you conjugate by B, uh, this would be conjugation. And if it's, if it's of course, if, you, um, if it's a billion and you can permute the order, then you can just cancel those two. So conjugacy classes kind of measure how far something is away from being a billion if you want. Um, but anyway, so a conjugacy class of the unit is certainly of size one and the others are of size uh, three four and four, whatever. And this is a table from before. And what we can see here already is that the gist of the table is a square in the middle here. And the funny fact here already is that this is a square, right? So I'm just saying columns are uh, simple representations, characters, simple representations. The rows are the conjugacy clauses. And well, um, it's not quite clear why there should be a square. There could be more conjugacy classes or fewer conjugacy classes, but it turns out that this is always the case. So it's always a square matrix that has as many conjugacy classes as characters, as simple characters, which is pretty good. It's a pretty cool result. It's already kind of nicely encoded in this table because it's a square. And well, the numbers are just the, the values of the characters on those conjugacy classes. And this is, as I said, the size. Um, and the second uh, row, this is the conjugacy class for the identity, actually has the dimension of the representations. So the first representation here is of dimension one, the next one is of dimension three, there's another one of dimension one and another one of dimension one. And why is that? Well, it's a conjugacy class of the identity and you take the trace of the identity matrix and the trace of the identity matrix is just the dimension of the underlying um, representation. So the character of the identity is just the, the trace. Uh, dimension of the representation. And then there's another funny fact. So if you take the second row and you take the square of the entries, so one squared plus three squared uh, plus also three times one squared, you actually get 12, which is the order of the group. Right? So um, the, the conjugacy classes should sum up to 12. So this is also 12. Uh, if you just sum them up, one plus three plus four plus four, um, but a little bit, uh, that's, that's kind of by construction. But way more surprising is that the squares of the dimension uh, also gives the order of the group, which is pretty cool. So he has quite a, quite a lot of information already encoded in this table. Like the first column tells you the dimensions and the squares of the numbers add up to 12 because the uh, order of the group is 12. And, but there's a little bit more uh, and it's kind of fun. And always a little bit confusing because there's a convention which is which are the rows and the columns and blah. so let's have a look whether I have best set up. So basically, rows and columns should be orthogonal to one another, but you need to weight one of them. So let's have a look. I claim that the rows are orthogonal. What do I mean? Well, take this row for example, uh, one three three one one, and for example the other one, this one here, and if you simply multiply, so take the scalar product. So you multiply those numbers in pairs and add them up. So one times one, three times minus one, one times one and one times one. Well, what is one times one, one times one and one times one, they end up, add, add, add up to three, of course. And then they are three times minus one, which ends up to minus three and you get zero. So they, they are orthogonal in that sense. So take kind of the scalar product of the entries by just multiply and add. add and you will always get zero. So if you would like to do this for the first and the third row, that will be the same, or for the third and fourth row, and so on. It's pretty nice already. So characters have some certain orthogonality built in. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But the same is true for the columns, but you have to be careful. The columns need to be weighted by those numbers here. So if you take, for example, the first column, 
and the uh, what is it the third column and you scalar multiply you don't quite get zero you need to uh, also add those numbers here so times one times three times four times four first entry times first entry first entry times first entry times the size of the conjugacy class second entry times second entry times the size of the conjugacy class and so on you add them up and you get zero again so it's kind of weighted orthogonal this is still pretty cool so let me summarize what actually is encoded in those tables um slide careful here from now on i change to the well more standard definition that's the standard nowadays which is opposite of Fabinius. so um simple characters end up in the in the rows and conjugacy clauses end up in the columns I'm historically speaking, not sure when, when kind of this switch happened, um, but it, it's kind of the usual nonsense that people can't agree on a, <laughs> on a convention. So Frobenius was exactly the opposite. And I was kind of trying to motivate everything from Frobenius original paper. So I kind of got stuck with Frobenius notation. And nowadays, most of the time it's the opposite. Just be careful here. So in particular, now I should say, columns are orthogonal and rows are weighted orthogonal in contrast to rows to our orthogonal and columns are rated orthogonal. So everything is just transposed. It's confusing. I'm sorry for that, but I kind of didn't find a really nice way to avoid it because as I said, modern literature, most almost 99% is the convention I have now on this slide and older literature is exactly reversed. Um, what can you do? Anyway, so <laughs> whatever, just uh, me waffling um, so the properties here is that the square in the middle is really a square. This is true in general, where you really need to use complex numbers because most of the time you see some roots of unities turning up. Like in the character table here, we definitely had some roots of unities. Um, and then the first column in this case contains the dimensions. So one, two, two, and they should sum up to the order of the group if you square them. So one squared plus two squared plus uh, uh, one squared plus one squared plus two squared is certainly six. And this is a character table of S6, uh, S3, which is order six. So that's pretty cool. And again, works completely in general. So first general fact is, again, all over everything over C here, so be a bit careful. Uh, simple characters, number of them is the number of conjugacy clauses. And this first column has this funny property that you take this is the dimensions and the squares of the dimensions give you the order of the group. And then we have, to, again, the, the columns are orthogonal and the rows are weighted orthogonal. So for example, can we see that the columns are orthogonal? Uh, one times one is one, one times one is one is minus one, two times zero is zero. If you sum them up, you get zero, for example. So the columns are orthogonal, pretty cool. And you have kind of everything encoded in this little, little table which is uh, quite nice and people like it and people will write down uh, zillions of um, characters online. So zillions of those character tables. So the point is um, they determine the representations and there's a much more efficient way to write down the information. So what you should do is kind of to make a list of them, right? Big data nowadays, um, just some online tool that can spit out those, those characters. I will show you in a later video a uh, magma Link is already in the description if you want to uh, use it yourself. It can calculate character tables of kind of any group, as long as it doesn't get too big, obviously. Um, here's another one also linked in the description. Um, just be always careful that they might have different conventions, but the character table usually look the same way. So we have some conjugacy clauses, you have some simple characters uh, denoted here by row, and you have sort of the usual square in the middle. So these are the, it's the character table of the dihedral group with eight elements. A little bit confusing, the dihedral group with eight elements is denoted D4. So it's always twice the number you see here. Um, and that's kind of the point. These determine representations, these are the elements of the theory. So what you should do is big data, as I said, you just write down the tables of them. You find a, quite a few links in the description. It's a lot of fun uh, to play with those tables. Anyway, so character tables, probably the most important notion, at least for finite group representations over the complex numbers. So you kind of need enough uh, roots of unities to make this work. So that's why they're called complex numbers. But the character table encodes 
all informations in some sense about the simple representations of a given group. And the simple representations are the elements and they're super important in the theory. And you can write down a little table that encodes all of them in a very efficient way. Yeah, we should do that. And you get the notion of a character table, which you usually can look up in any reasonable computer algebra system nowadays or on lists online, for example. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to see you next time.